So, uh, why do we begin an HVAC system design with a load calculation? Because of heat transfer, uh, that is uh, the flow of heat, it's the root cause of all of our comfort problems. Here we see a simple illustration of a home in summertime. It shows all the places where the house gains heat from the outside. It comes in through the walls, the windows, the doors, the roof, ceilings, and depending on where they are, you can even have it in the air ducts. We also have things inside the home that produce heat, like people and appliances. Note that we don't gain heat from the ground, though. Now, in this illustration, we see how a home loses heat in the winter. Basically, it's all the same structural elements as before, but on this one, we add uh, heat loss through the floors to the ground. So the reason that we do a load calculation is because of the heat transfer we saw in the previous illustrations. In summer, heat flows into the home, and there are two types of heat. There's sensible heat, which is dry heat, the temperature that we see on the thermostat, or the dry bulb temperature. Um, there's also latent heat. However, this is, uh, this is the wet heat, and it's the one that we associate with humidity, and we also call it the wet bulb temperature. In winter, we see heat flowing out of a home, and in this case, we only care about the sensible heat. That's the dry heat again. So in summer, we see a heat gain, which requires cooling for the home, and in the winter, we see a heat loss, so we need heating for the home. It really comes down to simple physics, specifically the second law of thermodynamics. It states that over time, differences in temperature will decrease until the thermodynamic, there's a thermodynamic equilibrium. It turns out that Mother Nature doesn't like temperature differences, so when there are two regions and one is hotter than the other, we'll see heat flow from the higher temperature region to the lower temperature region until they're the same temperature. But we're not like Mother Nature. We like our temperature differences, so we've designed objects and processes to slow, stop, or reverse this physical phenomenon. Think about it. We invented coats so that when it's cold outside, we can put one on and keep ourselves warmer than it is outside. And we use the HVAC equipment to keep our buildings cool in the middle of summer. And now that we have a background down, we can start talking about the load calculation. So what is a load calculation? Well, this is the exact definition. It is the procedure for calculating the rate of sensible and latent heat flow from the outdoor environment to an indoor comfort condition space for summer cooling, and from the indoor comfort condition space to the outdoor environment for winter heating. The process also calculates the sensible and latent heat flows caused by the dwelling HVAC system. The purpose is to provide sizing values for comfort conditioning equipment. That's a mouthful, right? Well, here's a little bit uh, simpler an explanation. Load calculation is really just an account of the total heat flow into or out of our home depending on the time of the year. And the reason that we need to do one is so that the designer knows the rate of heat flow so that they can pick the right equipment that makes the occupants comfortable and safe, but also keeps energy costs down. And please note that heat flow um, is a rate and has a unit of BTUH, um, which stands for uh, British Thermal Units Per Hour. If you recall from the system design diagram, manual J is ACCA's residential load calculation method. So what's it require? Well, manual J, manual J requires the designer to do a load calculation for two sets of design conditions, which we call the peak loads. For the winter, we have two design temperatures that we use in the load calculation. The outdoor design temperature will be the heating 99% dry bulb temperature. That is 99% uh, of the year, that's over 8,600 hours, it'll be warmer than this temperature. So that's pretty cold. Meanwhile, the indoor design temperature is going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb. And then for the summer, we have two design temperatures used for the load calculation also. The outdoor design temperature will be the cooling 1% dry bulb temperature. That is, for only 1% of the year, so slightly more than 80 hours, will it be warmer than this temperature? So it's actually pretty hot, well, uh, depending on the home's location, but it's hot for that home's location. Meanwhile, the indoor design temperature in the summer is going to be 75 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb. So where do we get these uh, design temperatures? Where do these come from? Well. 
The outdoor design temperature will be specific to the home's location. It's the 30-year average compiled by ASHRAE, and ACA's Manual J has these temperatures in tables 1A and 1B. Uh, we also have tables at these tables as a standalone document, which we offer for free download on our codes page. And in the fall of 2014, we also began the process of updating these tables to comply with the latest ASHRAE data. Um, the designer is required to uh, use this data for the city listed in the table um, that's closest to the location of the home. <clears throat> and the indoor design temperature, so that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit for winter heating and 75 degrees Fahrenheit for summer cooling, um, those were chosen to comply with uh, the comfort charts contained in ASHRAE Standard 55 on thermal environmental conditions for human occupancy. Here's an example of Table 1A's layout. As you can see, the leftmost column is location. Here, there are all cities for the state of Alabama. If we move to the right, we see that the table gives us the elevation, latitude, heating 99% dry bulb temperature, cooling 1% dry bulb temperature, the coincident wet bulb, the design grains for 55, 50, and 45% uh, percent relative humidity, as well as the daily temperature range for each city. For example, let's look at Birmingham Airport. The 99% dry bulb, which you see there, for heating is 23 degrees Fahrenheit. And the 1% dry bulb for cooling over on the other side is 92 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the end, we see that the median daily range for Birmingham Airport is right there, medium. So that means that the temperature swing throughout the normal day is not going to vary that much. So before we move on, here's a reminder of what we've covered so far. In a load calculation, the designer needs to account for every source of heat gain or heat loss. And these sources are what we call loads. Again, the example of a home's uh, heat gain in the summer. So you see all the loads. There's loads going through the ceilings, the windows, the walls, the ducts in this case. Now, let's look more uh, in depth at the various loads that are included in a normal load calculation. The first are the loads uh, that will likely have the biggest impact on the final load calculation, and those are the loads due to fenestration. These are loads that come from windows, glass doors, and skylights. And it makes sense if you think about it. If you sit next to a window in the middle of winter, you'll feel colder than anywhere else in the room because heat moves through glass so easily. So a window will lose more heat than a wall, especially when compared to a wall or a wooden door or a ceiling. But there's an important consideration for fenestration, and that's the orientation of the home. Um, that is, which way the front door faces. See, the direction that each piece of fenestration, that, that's uh, each window, each skylight, each glass door faces, plays a big role in the overall load calculation because of the sun's movement across the sky throughout the day. So a west-facing window will have a bigger load than a window that faces to the north because we're in the northern hemisphere. Knowing which way the front door faces will help the designer get the correct heat transfer values used in the load calculation, and we'll see that a little later in the tables. Now, the next set of loads that a designer has to account for are the opaque panels. And these, are, these include the wood and metal doors um, above and below grade walls, so that's above and below ground walls. Um, those are the exterior walls. There's also partition walls, which are interior walls. And uh, there's ceilings and also floors. And remember, the designer needs to account for each one of these. Infiltration is the next load that has to be accounted for. And what infiltration is, is the uncontrolled air leakage into the conditioned space through the cracks, the openings, and also leakage through the, uh, the attic ceiling, the crawl spaces, and, and or the basement, if it's applicable. And the most precise way to get an the, the infiltration load is to measure it directly using a blower door but we know that sometimes that's not possible, like for example, the home's not built yet. And in that case, Manual J has some default values uh, that can be used based on some construction assumptions. 
Next is the ventilation load. And ventilation is simply replacing the inside air with outside air, which can be done manually, like by opening windows, or it can be done mechanically, like with the ventilation system. And you can see here the diagram shows both ventilation uh, done manually on the left and ventilation mechanically uh, on the right. So as